I'm here. Am I a minute late? Yes. Is that because I was distracted? Yes. I I had a little bit of lunch and it was leftover homemade pizza and then it made me thirsty so I had a cup of tea and then um, I was sending an email and then it was 12.59. That's that's my excuse. I've also, I've got a cup of tea here, if you don't mind, uh, to quench my thirst from the homo pizza leftovers from my lunch. Um, so, today I am going to add some silkscreen stencil detail to this little stool. So, didn't work on this last week, but we did work on it the week before, I believe. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hello. Um, so, I'm going to try and get it finished because... Basically, I need it. <laughs> I genuinely use this all the time um, because I'm short um, or vertically challenged, as uh, somebody nicely put it um, in the comments. Sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? So I need this in my kitchen. So I want to get it finished so that, <laughs> so that I can put it back in my kitchen, basically. Um, so I decided to, I'm going to add some silk green stencil detail to it. Um, only a small amount of silk screen stencil detail and it's just going to tie it in with the cabinet the little wall shelf cupboard cabinet i don't know what you call it wall shelf little thing that i did a few weeks ago no it was a few months ago now um i actually did that just before i went away on holiday in the summer so i hi lisa i'm gonna do that um, my camera's wonky again for some reason. I don't know why. Um, it's very, it's very cool, cold here. It's, it's brisk. It's fresh. It's not cold. There's a nip in the air um, today. I even, I've even got a jumper on, which um, I'm normally in, just in a t-shirt, but it's cold today, and I've got a cover. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to this. This was painted. I'm going to need to just spin this. Don't look at my workshop. It's a mess. Um, there we go. Sorry for anyone that feels seasick. Um, so, I painted this stool. Um, it had a paint job on it. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. This had a paint job on it from years and years ago. Before my time with Dixie Bell. It was painted in another brand. Um, it's brisk in Michigan too. Yeah, it is. It's just the temperature's just turned a bit chilly. I even wore a jumper on my walk this morning, which I don't usually do. Um, so yeah, it has gone a bit, a bit chilly. Uh, but at least it's dry. I don't mind. I can't see when it rains. I can't see the old glasses get a bit messed up. Um, I used to tell my mum that brisk is a word you people in cold climates use. Yeah, it's brisk. It's brisk. It's not coat weather yet. We're not we're not quite there. Um anyway. Yes, this had a previous paint job on it, and I'm painting over the top of it because we're in the process of I say we're in the process of decorating. I mean it's we're going we've been here 10 years and we're still decorating, so we always do bits to the house, as you do. Um so the difference, the main difference between silk screen stencils and a standard stencil, I haven't even got a normal stencil to hand. So a normal stencil, you've all seen it, a normal stencil. It's just a piece of sort of plastic with a pattern cut out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Silk screen, silk screen stencils. It's a bit of a, a bit of a gobful. Um, slightly different in the way that they um basically they've got an adhesive back in so this is just a pack that i've just picked up to show you because this is the bit that i'm going to be working with and that looks kind of unimpressive doesn't it on its own so i thought i'd show you what they come like in the pack this is a another favorite of mine and i really like cutting these up and using them on their own as like little border detail um so with every pack you get different designs and each pack has got three sheets in it and that's the size of the sheet so there's a little bit smaller 
than a, a, a normal a normal stencil they're a little bit smaller in size and like i say they've got an adhesive backing so the white that you can see on here is actually the backing sheet and the purple is the bit that you stencil with so you peel it off and the purple bit is has got a sticky back so you can stick it to your project and that means that you can get really crisp lines and it also means that you can have a more intricate pattern than what you could a normal stencil um because obviously the more intricate you go with a normal stencil the more kind of flimsy it is the harder it is to get those clean crisp lines but with something that's got an adhesive back obviously you don't it doesn't wiggle around it doesn't move on the surface as much so that's the main difference between silk screen stencils they are reusable you can officially i think it says up to 10 uses I think yeah each stencil is reusable up to 10 times but i've had use out of them for longer um and basically what you do is you just wash them under warm water when you finish stenciling let them dry and then put them back on the back in and they're good to go for next time so it's not just a uh, one use kind of thing you can you can reuse them so that's what one sheet looks like and like i say i normally I normally cut mine up or just tape bits off so that I can just use one piece. So this particular one, if you're interested, is called Mandala. So like I say, you get three sheets and each sheet is slightly different design, but they all kind of tie under the particular design of that pack. If that makes any sense at all. Um, so that's just one that I just picked up to show you because I'm, I'm not going to be using the Mandala one today. I'm going to keep it the I'm going to keep the design I'm making too much noise with that. Um I'm going to keep my design the same as what I did on my little wall cupboard. So I'm going to use this and this is out of the pack called Botanical or Botanicals. And it's just one of the sheets. It's a continuous pattern that I have chopped up to use on its own and I'm I'm even chopping it down further. I'm not even just using one sheet. I am just chopping these lines up to make a just make a really little stencil. Um, so I'm going to chop this up with my nice kitchen scissors that are pretty blunt, to be fair. Um, and they're not too bad. So that's going to give me like a little border. So I've used this for a few times because I think it looks a little bit folky, a little bit folk arty, and I like that. One of my... Um, one of the things that I wanted to do this year, in fact, was to um, do some hand painted detail stuff on like folk arty kind of kind of style and learn a bit more about that. But I haven't because time and life. Um, but I would really like to do a little bit more hand painting. But for now, I'm going to use a stencil because it's easier and quicker and a lot probably a lot better than what my hand painted would look like um so i'm going to cut another one out so i've got two and um apologies for anybody that missed me yesterday on the dixieville youtube channel and that doesn't follow me on social media um i massively messed up a hair appointment so i normally book my hair appointments uh obviously for when i'm not going live uh because i don't like messing people around and for some reason i booked it yesterday but i booked it months and months ago only realized last week that i booked it on a tuesday which is my normal live day for the dixieville youtube channel couldn't change it she didn't have any cancellations there was nothing for weeks and weeks and weeks and basically i was desperate i needed a hair trim and and whatnot desperately it's been months so that's where i was if you missed me you probably didn't uh anyway this one we i did start to distress it with you on uh, the last video so i started to show you the difference between distressing so i've finished distressing it 
um, to the point where I'm cool with it. It's gonna, it's, it needs to look rustic basically because it's gonna get used and abused. I mean, it's, it's pretty battered anyway, but we do use it a lot in the kitchen. The kids perch on it. I stand on it to reach things. <laughs> um, we've got four dogs and their home is in the kitchen. So it's got to be kind of something that gets used and abused. So we've roughed it up a little bit. We've made it look like it's been, it's been through a, a bit of a tough time. But that's, that's my kind of jam. So the, just to recap, the... The base coat of this was drop cloth and then I stippled that on to create some texture and use sea spray as well and then I went in with honky tonk red because I've got some a few red kind of rustic pieces in my kitchen I've also got a bright red toaster just for anyone that wanted to know and um, it also ties in with a little wall shelf that I did for my kitchen uh, a couple of months ago so excuse my how I'm sitting <laughs> sitting like this because I need to get to this but I need this so yeah here we are did I even get a white what's wrong with me I didn't get a white um okay bear with let's just grab a white I'm not actually precious about the white that I use we're gonna go with drop cloth I think the white that I used on my shelf was fluff, but they're not gonna be sort of, it doesn't need to be matchy matchy. Drop cloth is absolutely fine. And this is a piece out of, this is a color out of my mystery box that Dixie Bell sent me that I'm working on this week. Um, and I'd just like to personally thank Jody Flavel from Decorous Vintage Designs for coming up with that idea. So I'm currently working on a little bookcase that I can see there, that um, is painted in stuff that Dixie Bell have sent me as part of a mystery box challenge. Uh, so that is a video that will be on my YouTube channel, hopefully Friday of this week. And you can see what I've done with that. It is, it, it's not my usual style. And that's the funny thing about mystery boxes. They kind of force you to work with products that you wouldn't ordinarily work with. Um, so I have enjoyed it. It's been fun to think about stuff um, that I wouldn't, like I say, I wouldn't ordinarily use. Some of the colours that they sent me, I don't think I've ever used before. Um, Stormy Seas is one of them. And I know it's such a good seller is Stormy Seas, but it's just, it's just a bit dull for me usually. So yeah, I'm working with it, but it is a beautiful shade. Um... So yeah, it's fun, it's fun. So you can see, I hope you can see, I've just peeled that off and stuck it down. There you go, that's a better angle. Unfortunately, I can't keep the camera like that because I'm holding it and I need my hands to stencil. So I've just stuck that down. And obviously it is a really small surface that I'm gonna have to stencil. Um, and I do have some teeny weeny stencil brushes but I couldn't find the smallest one. So we're going with this. And that is not, it's not the tiniest one I've got. So what I'm gonna do is grab some frog tape. You're all, you're all very quiet today. Is everyone okay? Um, I'm gonna grab some frog tape. So this is basically painter's tape that's suitable for painted surfaces. It's not gonna pull your paint off or anything like that. I'm not using this to stick the stencil down. I'm using it so that I can go over the edge of the stencil and it's not gonna go on the stool, if that makes sense. So I've also used this on a little vintage bureau where I didn't actually paint the exterior, I stripped it and stained it and I painted the inside and I used this exact stencil um, around the drop leaf section. So it looks it looks really sweet on its own. It just adds a little bit of detail. So I'm just gonna make sure it's straight and we're not going wonky off to one way, off to, you know, one, one direction. And then I've got my drop cloth. 
here. I'm hoping you can all see. Let me just see if I can. Oh, oh, there we go. Look, there we go. Um, I am almost doing the splits for this pose. I've got one leg over there and one leg over there, but I, it's okay. That's okay. So there's a couple of ways that you can apply your paint to your silk screen stencil. One of them is with a good old fashioned stencil brush. The other is you do get like a little plastic squeegee. Um, you're busy sanding a piece of furniture. That was a job. I missed the last bit of the comments. Yoga with Connie. Yeah, I don't think I'm quite qualified to do yoga. That would be one hilarious video. Um, yeah, I'm not quite there yet. So, like I was saying, you can apply it with a stencil brush like this. This is just a cheapo stencil brush. I think I got these off Amazon, a pack of them. Um, or you can apply it with the squeegee. If you are doing a small area like this, I find a stencil brush easier than the plastic squeegee that you get in the pack. And I'll show you what this does. Two ticks. Just in case uh, people don't know. Some of you may already know, some of you might have seen me use these already, but I just thought I'd cover it in case. So this is the plastic squeegee that you get in the pack with your silk screen stencils. If I'm doing a big surface, so if I was doing a whole sheet, for example, this is quicker and easier to do because you essentially just add a little paint on the surface and you just squeeze it through. And what that does is it forces it through the gaps, through the silk screen, basically. It does give you a nice crisp line. I've used this before. Um, you can you can do it that way, but because this is such a small little pattern, I'm just gonna stick to my brush. And then I know my hand's covering it. Let's try and do it with my left hand. So this is, this is uh, left-handed stenciling. <laughs> Um, so all I'm going to do is just force the drop cloth through here. Um, now you can swirl it a little bit, but because I'm not left-handed, my coordination skills, <laughs> um, are not that great left-handed. It's a, I'm a bit cack-handed left-handed, although I did, interesting fact, dun dun dun. I broke my right wrist rollerblading when I was younger and had to teach myself to write with my left hand because I was doing my GCSEs. Um, there's an interesting fact for you. Back to stenciling. There we go. So, there we go. And the frog tape, like I say, it's only there to prevent me going over the edge of the stencil because there's not really a line or a gap or a, a bit at the side of the stencil that's going to allow me any kind of grace at all in terms of going over the edge so i've just put my painter's tape there to basically stop me creating a white line either side of my stencil i'm gonna to have to go back to my right hand i can't do it left-handed i tried for you and i can't there we go that's it that's all you do and hopefully hopefully i'm going to try and pull it all off together there you go you get a nice cute little little stencil now i'm going to distress this anyway so if it looks a little bit kind of patchy i actually quite like that I kind of like that look. Obviously, this doll is heavily distressed. Um, if you wanted it to not be patchy, if you wanted it not to look distressed, just make sure that you've got a, an even coverage of the paint through the silk screen before you take it off. Because if you want to try and put it back down again, it's just hard to do that. Even with normal stencils, it's a pain in the butt. So if you do want to do, make sure you just make sure you've got an even coat 
and it's you can use slightly more paint with a silk screen stencil than what you can with a normal stencil because it sticks because it sticks down to the surface you don't have to worry quite so much about bleed through i find with these so if you're struggling with stencils these might be a good one to to try and then for the other side i'm going to make the direction of these little leaf things go in the opposite way so i'm just going to stick that down like that make sure it's straight just stick it down nice and firm where's my there we go just get my tape again i'm just overlapping the silk screen ever so slightly because if I just butt it up to the silk screen, it's going to leave a tiny little gap, which is where paint could get through. So I'm taking my painter's tape ever so slightly. I'm talking like one or two millimetres over the top. And I'm just overlapping it ever so slightly. Okay. Just so that it's not going to... I'm not going to get any paint seepage between where the silk screen finishes and the, the tape starts. So I'm just going to go back in with drop cloth. So that is roughly how much paint I've got to start off with on my brush. But I'll probably need to apply a little bit more when I've got a certain so far with it. You can actually see... where you haven't got enough paint on these so you can actually kind of tell where you need to apply a little bit more paint i still don't add as much paint as what i would if i was painting you don't want too much paint you don't want to tempt fate you don't want to tempt the old bleed through but you can definitely use a little bit more paint than what you would do with a usual stencil. If I was using that amount of paint with a standard stencil, there would be bleed through problems, but this is absolutely fine. These brushes are not great. They do shed quite a bit. They were just cheap and nasty ones from, from Amazon. So again, I'm just gonna peel it all off at once there we go and that's it that's all the stencil detail that i'm going to add on this particular piece i did look to see if i could add any anywhere else but i think it might just be a little bit overkill if i do so i'm going to leave it with that little stencil detail at the very top and then i'm actually not going to wax this piece because you all know waxing is my favourite top coat. It definitely is. I just like how it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to seal this with satin clear coat. I think it's satin that I've got. Um, just because... Let me just move this out of the way. Just because satin's going to give me a little bit more durability. So... You need to choose, when you're choosing top coats, it's probably best to think about the usage that the furniture is going to have. Um, a lot of the time, I will wax pieces um, because wax furniture is actually very durable. Um, however, I'm going to be standing on this. I don't, <laughs> I don't always change out my walking boots. Um when I'm in the kitchen. So I'm going to need to be able to scrub this, um, wipe it down. Um, Herbie sometimes perches on it to eat his food and he's a boy and he's a bit messy. So he gets, sometimes I found food on it. So it needs to be able to be wiped down. That's my point. So although wax, yes, it's my favorite kind of top coat. I love working with it. I love the finish that it gives. Is it going to be the best thing for this stool? Probably not. So I'm going to use satin. Clear coat. I can still use black wax to give it a little bit of depth and dimension afterwards. But 
I'm not gonna use clear wax for the for the top coat on this one. Um, so, my new favorite way of applying a top coat, obviously I'm not gonna top coat the top. Um, hi, hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Um, I am not gonna top coat the very top of this because I've just stenciled it and it'll it'll basically smudge. So I'm just gonna top coat a little bit of this with you to show you my new favorite way of applying a top coat. So um, where are we? These, I'll turn it that way for a little bit. These are my favorite way of applying a top coat. I am actually not much of a, a top coater. I will always use wax where I can, always. Um, I like Best Hand Wax. I also like Easy Peasy Spray Wax, mainly because I personally find working with wax a heck of a lot easier than working with top coats. I also like the finish that wax gives versus the finish that a top coat gives. So a top coat actually does top, sit on top of your finish. It, it sits over the top of your paint. Whereas a wax, it kind of, you have to rub it into the paint a little bit more so it just gives it just it just gives a totally different finish and it genuinely does if you see your wax piece versus a piece that has been top coated i personally think i'm always drawn to wax pieces i can tell when something's been waxed i just think it looks nicer personal opinion not fact personal opinion however like i say we're going to not use wax on this piece um it's just it's just not fit for purpose for this particular thing this is gonna have some abuse thrown at it so foam and dandy foam brushes are the way forward if you struggle with applying top coats in any other method if you've got a method that you are happy with whether that be a brush a roller a spray a mop uh throwing it at your piece stick with what works for you up until now, this is my preferred method. And I have done a lot of different methods with top coating. I've rolled it. I've used a blue sponge. I've brushed it. Brushing is okay if you've got quite a lot of texture in your piece because it's a little bit more forgiving. If you are top coating a perfectly smooth, flat finish, I prefer a roller, mainly for speed. Um, but this, these are the best way for now. So these is obviously a foam brush. It's a foam brush. They're reusable. You can get them in three different sizes. This is, these are two of the sizes. And then there's a larger one as well, which is perfect for bigger surfaces. And um, yeah, they're reusable. You just wash them. That's a high quality foam. And they haven't got that really, some foam brushes that I've used have got like a really annoying little plastic bit inside. Whereas this, the obviously it needs plastic to be rigid and hold its shape. Um, sometimes the plastic comes right to the edge and it gives you like a really annoying, it just, it, it's just annoying. The, the, the plastic bit in here is a, it's about down here. So you've got all of that foam that will give you a nice kind of soft finish. Um, how many uses can you get from them? These will last you forever, as long as you're using them with a water-based top coat. If you're using an oil-based top coat, you'll probably find that they start to depreciate a little bit and the oil-based top coat will start to eat away at the foam. But water-based top coats, the original ones that Dixie Bell sent me before these were released, I've still got them. I've washed them and they're absolutely fine. They haven't lost their shape. Um, they haven't gone like bitty. Some sometimes foam stuff starts to sponge stuff starts to go, you know, kind of loses some of its foam. Um, but they've they've lasted, uh, you know, as long as I've had them, months and months now. Um, and it's like a brush. It's like a brush with bristles. If you wash it as soon as you've used it, look after it, get it to you know um, dried. They will last a long time. They're very very good quality. Um, so that's foam and dandy. I, you know, the bench that I did, the pine settle with the lift up 
lid that I did a couple of weeks ago in blues that was top coated using these um, and I top coated that again for durability I thought people might be popping their derriere on it and sitting on it maybe in a hallway or something so again didn't really want to use wax for that reason I used these absolute game changer absolute game changer I'm I'm sold on these bad boys and that's coming from somebody that doesn't like using Tokyo an awful lot okay so let's see if I can show you on this flat surface here um can you see can you see me step there 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 yes okay so i've got my huge tub of satin clear coat here that has seen better days um usually i will decant my top coats this is this is this is a good tip this is a good tip take note so i am a bit of a swine for not decanting paint and you should you should decant paint you should decant top coats and the reason for that is when you are painting or top coating you can pull contaminants from your piece onto your sponge roller brush whatever when you dip that back into your pot you are then putting those contaminants and you could essentially put contaminants back into your paint or your top coat now, I know this fact, and I've known this fact for a long time. Do I do it? No, I don't, because I'm naughty. But that is why I do usually decant, especially top coats, because if you get a little bit of fluff in there, and then you put that, or a little bit of dust, and you pick that up on your brush, and then you put that back in a big old tub like this, and then you've got bits floating around in your tub, it's annoying. So I do usually use a plate or a roller tray and decant a little bit of product at a time the other good thing about it is you're not leaving the lid off your piece for too long um, which is always a good tip again i know these tips do i do them no so we're working straight out the tub here because uh, that's that's how i roll i learn the rules and then i break them so there we go there's my step i've got that much product on so your first coat is always going to take a little bit more top coat it's always going to take a little bit more product and then subsequent quotes coats after that are gonna use a little bit less and you literally just apply it like this make sure you get a good coat of it on without any kind of pooling or anything it just distributes a really even coat no brush marks because obviously there's no bristles because it's foam and the good thing about this that i personally find versus a blue sponge so these are very very similar quality to the blue sponges which i absolutely love but i've never really had a huge amount of success with top coats with the blue sponges and i think i know the reason why so there we go you can see how quick that was to top coat really even smooth coverage there's no brush dark there's no brush marks there's no strokes um there's no pooling there's no thick areas there's no thin areas there's no dragging so this is my conclusion as to why i think i've not had very good results with my sponge the top coat sponge the blue sponge i do use them for applying wax and i do and i have great success with them with wax top coats not so much and i think i know why it's because i'm quite heavy handed and because i'm heavy handed i tend to push on too hard and then i get kind of unevenness where my hand pressure finger pressures is obviously different with this because i've got a handle it's a really even pressure a consistent even pressure on the surface a little bit like a roller because you've got a, obviously the big surface there you've got a, you've got a handle i know you can press down hard and you can with this as well obviously you can press down like that um you don't need to you just need to lightly pass over the surface so i think that's why personally i don't get good results from blue sponges i've watched other people use blue sponges with top coats and very successfully but that's personally i'm heavy-handed so i think that's why but with this you you can't really get it wrong in my opinion and like i say i don't like top coats i 
prefer waxing but this gives you a really nice even consistent finish to your top coat so i hope that helped that was a lot of me talking um but i was hopefully explaining explaining what i was doing as well my also my cup of tea is going cold So I'm not going to top coat the top because obviously it's probably not dry. Um, but you can see. <clears throat> can you see how it's quite an even finish? Hopefully you can see. Um, but this is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, my new favourite way to date of applying a top coat. They've saved me a lot of a lot of uh, headaches these have actually and like i say the biggest one which is i feel like it's a three inch one i they're over there in the box um really good for larger flat surfaces i'm looking at my mystery box item over there which is a little bookcase and it's got a lot of flat surfaces that would be perfect for the larger one for applying a top coat but it's a mystery box and I didn't get one of these in my mystery box. I got three brushes. So can, can I break the rules and use this for a top coat for it? Or do, do I have to stick with what's in the box? I don't know. Uh, like I said, I do like breaking the rules. Um, but I feel like I don't want to spoil the mystery box challenge either. I don't know. So that's that um yes and marie says yes i'm taking that as a yes as i can break the rules i'm gonna break them i am gonna break them because i know that if i try and top coat that because the top coat they sent me this is dixie bell doing me dirty they know that i use wax all the time so they sent me satin clear coat so i've got to top coat that in satin and the thought of top coating that with a brush no it's gonna be a no i'm gonna use one of these i want to break the rules so that's that um anyway i have been on for 37 minutes and eight seconds i believe that is long enough of your time uh this week so i am gonna top coat this i'll stage it and i'll show it on my social media um hi lisa yes i got my new car i also got my van back yesterday <laughs> Can you believe it? The timing. So our mechanic said, like, there was a few issues with it. And obviously, we knew the engine was needed to be rebuilt again. And he just said, it will be as long as it needs to be. And I was like, fine. Like, I'm not going to rush him. He's just trying to do his job. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, whatever. Take time. It is what it is. In the meantime, we went car searching. I've been without a car now since mid-August. And it's been an absolute nightmare um anyway picked my new car up last weekend and <laughs> the van was on the drive yesterday not even have a new car and the van's back runs fine runs absolutely perfect engine's be rebuilt um it's had a load of new parts put on it and it's fine but it's upset me one too many times as much as i do love the van i do i get attached to cars Am I weird? I get attached to vehicles. Um, yeah, as much as I do love the van, it's it's wronged me too many times. And I literally would probably give me some kind of anxiety attack if I was to go away and it broke down again. I think that would be probably the, the end for me um, mentally. Um, so I just... <sighs> it's got to go i've got to sell it it's had a brand new engine rebuild it's had an absolute load of new parts it's been tested and tested and tested it's been run and it's been tested and it's been run it's been tested and it's fine so she's got to go she's got to go but yeah the new vehicle is lovely it's a lot posher than my van i do feel a little bit sick when i drive it because i feel like it's 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 too posh um never had such such a nice car it's even it's eight years old it's not even brand new but um it does make me feel will your new car pull a caravan yeah it's a land rover so it's designed to tow 
Um, and it, we're supposed to be going away on Sunday in the caravan with the Landy. So I'll let you know. I'll let you know if we break down in the Landy. I shouldn't even joke about that, should I? Don't joke about it because it might happen. Um, so anyway, because I've had so much bad experience with vehicles, I've got extended warranty. Can I take you, can I talk to you a second about a vehicle's extended warranty? I was like, yes, you can talk to me about a vehicle extended warranty and you can sell me an extended warranty. Posh cars are the best. Mine was inherited nozzle bells and whistles. Yeah, it's nice. It is a nice vehicle, but we don't have nice things because we break nice things and we trash nice things. It's got a tow -a caravan. It's got to fit dogs and kids in it. And it's also got to fit furniture in it, which I can report it does very well. I picked it up on Saturday at one o'clock. By three o'clock, she was full to the brim with furniture. I was like, it's going in. I say she, I'm not entirely sure it is a she yet. I don't know. It might be a he. Um, but it fits the furniture in very well. Um, so it's got to be a workhorse because that's what we need. But it's, yeah, it was, it was, it's not a purchase that I wanted to make this year. Um, but there we go. That's how life happens, doesn't it? But we've got a new vehicle. We should be going away in it. I will keep you updated. Oh, I hate cars. I hate them. Used to be a bit of a petrol head back in the day. Used to love spending my money on vehicles, but not anymore. I just want it to work. I just want it to drive from A to B and that's it. And fit furniture in and tow a caravan. <laughs> That's all I need. So, yeah, now I've got to start with the task of selling selling my old van. So, there we go. So, that's your car update for those of you that are interested. <laughs> it's been it's been a roller coaster. It's been a vehicle roller coaster. So, anyway, um about going away, we are going away on Sunday. We're going away for a few nights. Um so please don't rob my house. Um <laughs> Uh, my hair looks good, thank you. It's gone back to being tied up because I went on a dog walk this morning and it's windy and yeah. So anyway, next week I won't be here. I will be away for a few nights in the caravan. Uh, hopefully not broken down. Um, so I won't be live on the Dixieville YouTube channel. I won't be live on my own YouTube channel, but I will have a little video for you on Friday. Fridays is my new video day. I always try and get an edited video out on a Friday now. It used to be a Sunday, but um, I'm trying to get them out on a on a Friday for you. So I will have a little video for you on Friday um, next week, but I just won't be live because hopefully I'll be on the English coast getting some sea air. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I have to put my hair back when I'm painting. I can't deal with this in my face. And when I'm walking the dogs as well, and it's all like this, I'm like, nope, not the one. So it looks better down, but we're working. So it's up. So that's that. Anyway, thank you for tuning in this week. Um, I hope the top coat and the stenciling was helpful. Um, there is not really any more that I could do on this stool. I mean, I've got black wax to add on to it, but I could probably do that on a little kind of reel type thing and put it on Instagram and on YouTube short. So I'm not entirely sure that it's worth having, dedicating a whole live video to. So I might be back next time in a, two weeks with something different. I'll finish this. Um, beach pics, never been to the UK. It's, it's, we have some amazing beaches here. Um, I love the British coast. It's absolutely amazing. I do like it at this time of year as well. Um, obviously it's chilly, probably not warm enough to swim unless you like cold swimming. Um, but yeah, the coast is lovely and, um, the dogs like it. The kids like it. We like going for long, nice long walks. But I will make sure I put everything in my Instagram stories. So uh, if you want to see any any beach spam, head over to Instagram. Um, so yeah, I'll be back in a fortnight's time for something completely different. Um, and I will see you then. Thank you. Have a nice day. 